acne is frustrating, especially if you're an adult. Today, let's tackle the topic of adult acne and what you can do about it. I'm Dr. Nina Desai, a board-certified cosmetic and medical dermatologist and mom of four. I want to help you find solutions to your skin concerns and share a little bit about my life. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment on what skincare topics you want me to tackle in future videos. If you're struggling with adult acne, you can develop adult acne in your 20s, 30s, or even 40s. And typically what you'll notice is that the acne tends to be along the jawline and even tends to creep down the neck. You can develop adult acne in other places as well, and you can develop what's called both comedonal and inflammatory lesions. Comedonal lesions tend to be blackheads and whiteheads, and the inflammatory lesions tend to be the actual pimples, pustules, and even cysts. The pathophysiology of hormonal acne is that hormones will affect the oil glands and your oil glands will then be responsible for triggering oil production and the creation of these acne breakouts. And it tends to be typically females that are affected by this type of acne. And the story that I look for is women tend to notice that with hormonal fluctuations, their acne gets worse. Someone may say that about a week before they get their period, their skin tends to get a little bit bit more oily and they start to break out along the jawline. The reason that that's happening is because during that time of their cycle, there's an upregulation of the androgen hormone or the male hormone that's triggering the oil production on their skin. But it's not only your period or your menstrual cycle that can trigger hormonal acne. Sometimes it's stress as well because the stress can upregulate the androgen hormones as well. So in my consultation, when we're treating hormonal acne, we'll talk about when do the breakouts happen is it related to your menstrual cycle, but also what else is going on in your life? Some women will say, yes, there's a stressful event. Some women will also say, you know, they were on birth control and now they came off of it. So they're going through these hormonal fluctuations. So once we've diagnosed hormonal acne, we all want it gone right away, right? So there are a few treatments that I really like for hormonal acne. And the first is an oral medication called spironolactone. Spironolactone is what's known as an anti androgen so it helps to block one of the receptors in the production of testosterone, and that will help to level out those hormonal surges. Spironolactone is taken orally, and it does take several months to work. So I typically let my female clients know that we're gonna wait about three cycles to see what this medication is doing for you. Spironolactone is a medication that works wonderful for hormonal acne, but it really needs to be done with the supervision of your dermatologist, because there are some individuals that are not gonna Good candidates for spironolactone. Anyone who's planning pregnancy, anyone who is pregnant, and anyone with some underlying medical conditions may not be a good candidate for spironolactone. Spironolactone is what's known as a diuretic also. So when you take it, it may make you go to the bathroom more often. So you really need to make sure that you're staying well hydrated on the medication because if you're not, some individuals may feel dizzy while on it. The other thing that can happen with spironolactone is you can notice some menstrual irregularities as well. You can also notice some breast tenderness. That tends to be one of the more common side effects. So if you're considering going on spironolactone, it's really important to discuss this with your dermatologist to make sure you're a good candidate. In the same respects, birth control is another option for women experiencing hormonal acne. There are a few birth controls that are FDA approved for the treatment of acne, and those are typically the ones that I recommend. The object, obviously, of birth control is to level out those hormones and to get rid of those hormonal surges that are triggering the acne. In addition to those oral medications, there's definitely some topicals that I recommend for hormonal acne as well. All of my hormonal acne patients patients will go on some form of a retinoid, whether it's an over-the-counter retinoid or a prescription string tretinoin, we discuss that and find the right one for you. But that's important to help control oil production and to help with cell turnover and to help with any clogged pores, whiteheads, or blackheads. And just to remember, when you're prescribed a topical medication like a retinol or a tretinoin, you want to be using that product all over the face. Tretinoins and retinoids should not be used as a spot treatment. If you use them as spot treatments, that's actually how your skin's going to get more red, dry, peely, and irritated, and you're not going to like that product. So remember to apply your retinoids to your entire face. Retinoids tend to be both treatment and preventative, so you really want to use them all over so that you treat your active breakouts and you don't develop new ones. 
So because one of the main issues that's happening in a hormonal acne is the upregulation of oil on the skin, we want to do everything we can to control that oil production. So retinoids are extremely important, but also using products like salicylic acid are really important. I love salicylic acid cleansers and leave-on products for that particular reason. If you're feeling like your skin is super oily in the middle of the day or by the end of the day, using a salicylic acid cleanser is a really good way to get the oil out of those pores to make sure that you're not actually going to break out overnight while you sleep. So not only is salicylic acid going to help improve the oil production on your skin, it's really going to help bring down inflammation as well. Some of my favorite products that you can pick up with salicylic acid in them are the CeraVe SA Cleanser, the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Solution, and the La Roche-Posay Effaclair Acne Serum. There are some topical medications that you can get by prescription to help control hormonal acne as well. And those include prescriptions such as Winlivy and Dapsone. These are topical medications to help control some of that androgen in the skin. Now, this is another thing to discuss with your dermatologist if you're a good candidate for topical medications or oral medications. In my experience, if you're experiencing hormonal acne that is inflammatory and cystic, the oral medications do work faster and better. Spironolactone, while for the most part we're using it orally, it can be compounded topically by a special compounding pharmacy as well. So for some of my clients who are not ready for oral medications, we'll talk about the topical options. So another important aspect of treating your inflammatory acne is knowing what to do when you have a large breakout that pops up. So some of my favorite spot treatments for hormonal acne, because they can be kind of cystic along the jawline at certain times of the month, is to grab either an over-the-counter benzoyl peroxide spot treatment or a sulfur spot treatment or even a hydrocolloid patch that you can put over the area. What those are going to do is they're going to help shrink the active lesions so that you don't have a chance to put your hands on them and create more inflammation, pigment, and scarring. So for spot treatments, I really like the sulfur-based products from Neutrogena, their Stubborn Acne Sulfur Spot Treatment, and the Normaderm by Vichy, which has a 10% sulfur in it. And for patches, I really like the COSRX patches. So while there are oral medications and topical medications that you can get prescription-wise, there are a few things that we can do in terms of treatments to help speed up the recovery from a hormonal acne flare as well. In my office, I'll do a lot of acne-grade chemical peels as well, and what this will do is it will help shrink some of the active lesions and help lift some of the post-inflammatory pigment that's left behind by these breakouts. I will also offer light therapy, so red light and blue light therapy can be be really effective in combating the inflammatory lesions. But the most important thing about hormonal acne is to know that it starts from within. It starts from those hormonal fluctuations. So we really want to focus on, yes, the short-term treatments, but also how do we treat the long-term cause of what's happening on your skin? So if you're experiencing breakouts of any type, hormonal or otherwise, you really want to see your dermatologist as soon as possible because the more inflammatory the lesion, the more post inflammatory complications you can have like redness and pigment and scarring. And the faster we get you on the right medications, the less complications you'll have. What's your favorite skincare product for acne? Share in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.